We are very lucky to do what we do uh, and live our dream every day of performance. C'est magique une vie comme comme la sienne. He's one of the strongest circle performers I've seen. En fait, quoi, le show qu'il fait aujourd'hui, c'est un vécu qui mime. Peu importe comment ça commence, à partir du moment où tu es déterminé ou passionné, ben, ton amour pour ce que tu fais l'emportera. Il voyage, il a fait tous les continents qu'il puisse y avoir. Il va chercher ce qu'il aime. C'est un grand artiste de la calle. He looks like he just left a fucking business meeting, but in fact he's a street performer. It's fucking amazing. Voilà, c'est ici que j'ai grandi, dans le quartier à Dinard, Saint-Alexandre. C'est où j'ai fait mes premiers pas de danse. Là, c'est ma maison. Ce qui nous a vraiment rapprochés, en fait, c'est dans un premier temps, c'était la musique, le rap, et ensuite euh, la danse. Le quartier où on habitait, Saint-Alexandre, en fait, ouais, c'était vraiment notre, notre fief. En fait, c'est là où on se rejoignait tous les jours. On avait investi les lieux, on, a, on avait ramené un tapis, euh, j'avais mon poste à la cassette là, à l'époque. Voilà, c'est dans ce petit parc où vraiment la majorité du temps, eh ben, je m'entraînais. Tous les ans au quartier, il y a une fête. C'est la fête du quartier, la fête de Saint-Alexandre. Et en fait, le maire avait vu qu'on s'intéressait plus ou moins, les jeunes s'intéressaient plus ou moins au mouvement hip-hop. Et c'est ici que j'ai vu bah, un groupe de breakdance qui était venu pour euh, la fête du quartier, dont Junior, et c'est surtout la personne qui m'a marqué. Ça nous a clairement piqué les yeux. Hein. Euh, ça a mis le point final, ça a dit « ouais, bon, bah, attends, ça sera le break, et puis c'est tout, quoi. » J'arrive à, à Dinard, il y a deux petits blonds comme ça, un qui a le flow de ouf, qui envoie de la technique, et le deuxième qui envoie des trucs de fou, et, et voilà, c'est eux qui attiraient l'attention, quoi. On a fait une petite démonstration de notre côté, en, vraiment en amateur. Et en fait, euh, William s'est avéré qu'il avait un don. Au final, on s'est dit, bah, ces petits-là, ils ont autant la dalle que nous, ils aiment autant euh, cette discipline que nous. Ils nous ont invités à venir danser avec eux, et c'est là où vraiment ça a commencé. C'était naturel de les prendre sous notre aile, de les emmener euh, dans des compétitions régionales, notamment euh, les transmusicales ou au même quartier d'été. Il y avait des battles 1 contre 1, donc moi et William a participé de, du point. Et sinon, c'était que, que contre les petites, contre la jolie. Là où j'avais kiffé, c'est qu'il avait gagné ce battle. On vient de Dinard, on vient de quelque part, on ne connaît pas, hein, mais il a réussi à sortir un mec de, de Paris. On dit Paris, Paris, mais lui, il l'a fait. Le break n'était pas la culture ou la discipline ou même le sport local. <rire> il fallait vraiment être passionné et être déterminé pour pouvoir continuer. Là où tout s'est accéléré pour lui, c'est en 2005-2006, je crois. En fait, on est parti à Paris ensemble et il devait s'inscrire dans une école hôtelière. Lui, il arrive en premier à Paris, un peu en découverte et tout ça. À la base, c'était pas du tout la danse parce qu'il avait un peu raccroché. Et en fait, il a rencontré des gens ici qui ont fait qu'il a repris cette danse-là, et repris cette passion. Et je me suis rendu compte que l'école hôtelière, en fait, il n'en avait rien à foutre. Je voulais aller voir ce qui se passait dans le milieu hip-hop parce que ça a toujours été ma passion. C'est pas facile de se dire, ok, voilà, je vais partir et euh, essayer de développer mon art, tout simplement. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de personnes qui font, et encore moins à cet âge-là. Donc ensuite, j'ai commencé à danser en groupe avec des gens du 19e, des gens du, du, du 93, des gens avec qui j'ai tissé des liens, on faisait des compétitions. Et ensuite, il y avait des gens qui venaient, qui partaient dans ce groupe, où on commençait à faire des spectacles de rue, mais c'était plus de l'entraînement dans la rue qu'autre chose. Donc vous dansez dans la rue comme ça euh, Effectivement, euh, nous dansons indépendamment <rire> sur euh, le bitume. Et au fil des années, bah, c'est euh, à cette occasion que j'ai rencontré Kani. Le feeling il est passé tout de suite. Hein. On était tout en concurrence, on avait deux styles différents, mais c'était celui qui allait faire plus que lever les gens. Avec Kani, on avait créé Pitch Control. 
c'était un collectif où les gens partaient, revenaient. Et donc à un moment, bah, on a décidé de rester qu'en duo et de faire quelque chose de solide. Le changement de pitch control entre groupe de 5-6 personnes et un duo, on ne l'a pas vu arriver. Mais il est vrai que Ikani et William, ils étaient euh, basés sur la street. Ça veut dire pas de plan à côté, pas de taf. Oh, yeah William, il avait la chance d'avoir un ordinateur. Et il tapait, il tapait sur son ordinateur, il apprenait le logiciel. Et il avait déjà l'idée de faire euh, le concept d'une boîte de nuit où on se fait refouler. Donc quand on faisait ce show-là, ça parlait à tout le monde. Ils ont fermé des bouches avec leur show là, en termes de boîte là, coin, coin, coin. Chien en or, cac, cac, cac. Souvent en duo, il y en a un qui est plus fort que l'autre. Alors que là, la symbiose entre les deux, elle était énorme. On dansait du mercredi au dimanche. Il m'a dit, écoute, Ikani, c'est pour les nuls. À partir du mois de mai, on danse tous les jours. Tous les jours, c'est street, street, street. Euh, on s'en fout du, du reste. Tu sais, c'était quoi la règle d'or chez Pitch Control On n'avait pas le droit d'avoir de meuf. On a fait grandir nos, nos arts ensemble, l'épanouissement. Et ça a été super intéressant parce qu'on est tombé, on s'est relevé. Le duo, il a taffé. Il est en osmose. On avait tellement de succès que les gens, ils venaient pour nous dire hey, « Eh, c'est pas ici que ça se passe. » Ils avaient tellement ficelé leur, euh, leur duo qu'un autre duo aussi énorme, je sais pas si dans la street française, ça va exister. Quand il est passé en solo, je me rappelle, on a eu une discussion, je lui ai dit « Ouais, la, la, solo, franchement, c'est dur, mais quand il arrive, tu vis les meilleurs moments parce que tu n'as besoin de personne. Et c'est là que je pense que je me suis développé en tant qu'artiste. La rue, c'est quelque chose, soit t'es rue, soit t'es brutal, soit tu prends tout ce qu'il y a avec, soit tu cherches que le bon côté et tu te mets sur le côté. C'est tout. En spectacle, que ce soit dans la rue ou bien dans une salle, tu es là pour partager, pour donner quelque chose. L'importance de la street, c'est tout ce qui est autour du show. Et je pense que William, il a vraiment apporté ce côté-là où aujourd'hui, il se fait beaucoup pomper. Aujourd'hui, il a inspiré euh, quasiment toute la France. Most street performers are copying someone else, but William is a performer that everyone is copying. Comment attirer les gens? Comment les mettre à l'aise? Comment les, les faire tenir 45 minutes? Wow! Il faut surtout euh, créer des eyes contacts, c'est-à-dire voir bien à qui on a affaire, quel type de public, leur montrer que qu'il faut se détendre que c'est quelque chose de participatif. Depuis tout à l'heure, je vois que beaucoup de gens me regardent comme un accident de la route. Faire comme si on était dans sa chambre et, et danser pour soi-même et ensuite euh, créer du suspense avec des objets, des choses. C'est ça qui est intéressant parce que ça devient une véritable science et, et c'est à travailler chaque jour. Tu peux dire au monsieur en blanc de se rapprocher jusqu'à la ligne Merci. Plus doucement, plus doucement, vous allez trop vite, monsieur. Slow, slowly, slowly. C'est pas en termes de show qu'il a progressé. C'est tout ce qui est autour du show. C'est toi qui vas chercher ton public euh, et tu dois le retenir. Ce côté euh, one-man show qui développe, bah oui, c'est la chose qu'il fallait faire, c'est sûr. I've seen William do shows and empty, pff, no one anywhere, and in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it's a. Uh... Faire participer des enfants aussi, c'est important pour détendre l'atmosphère, faire un truc plus humain. Ils vont, ils vont faire les choses sans réfléchir à l'instinct et le spectacle de rue, c'est avant tout euh, un vrai partage. Il fait un incroyable show et sa connexion avec l'audience est incroyable. Donc il peut avoir des grandes grandes crowds et le edge de la crowd est toujours so tight. And... Quand il dit « Don't move », il y a plus de 1000 personnes et ils ne bougent pas. En termes de solo, il a dépassé tout le monde. Il a déglingué tout le monde. William est definitely représentant le parisien et le French style le plus. C'est incroyable, il est très classé. Il semble qu'il like a juste left a fucking business meeting, mais en fait, il est un street performer. C'est fucking amazing. C'est une grande balance. Je me suis dit, si tu y es arrivé à Paris, tu peux y arriver partout. Parce que pour moi, Paris, ça a été la meilleure école. Il y a plein de gens qui passent à côté de leur vie, en fait, parce qu'ils n'ont pas réussi à se trouver. Et ils se rendent compte, ouais, j'aurais voulu voyager, j'aurais voulu faire ça, j'aurais voulu... Et c'est juste parce qu'ils n'ont pas fait les bons choix. 
j'ai eu un déclic et je voulais euh, aller voir les autres continents. Quoi. Je suis parti au Canada. J'ai ensuite enchaîné par les états unis Pour finir au Brésil, ça a été en tout une année de voyage non-stop. Quand j'ai connu à William, je l'ai vu avec une pinta comme de gringo touriste perdu. Aussi, se notaba que que es un gran artista de la calle. Hemos viajado pel horizonte, una ciudad muy enriquecedora, con mucha cultura. Eh, hemos ido a un barrio que se llama Santa Teresa. On va dire les destinations un peu risquées que prend William, c'est vraiment pour l'expérience. Bon, là, je suis à la périphérie de Melbourne. Concrètement parlant, c'est qui qui est parti en Australie vraiment C'est lui. Tout le reste, ils ont suivi comme des cafards. Sydney, baby. William and I uh, live very similar lives. Uh, we're traveling a lot. Il a accumulé les voyages euh, et euh, toute l'expérience qu'il a portée à chaque fois qu'il revenait. Tu voyais que le mec, rien qui progressait, il progressait, il progressait. Voyager grâce à sa passion, à en vivre. Ah ouais, c'est un kiff, quoi. J'ai été aussi à Lisbonne, c'est une ville qui m'a beaucoup plu. Ça sent la liberté. Il n'y a aucune loi au niveau des artistes de rue, on nous laisse s'exprimer. William came to New Zealand and uh, did some shows in my home country of Queenstown. Et là-bas, j'ai eu un peu de temps, vu que je faisais qu'un spectacle par jour. Ça m'a fait prendre confiance en moi, dans le sens où si tu crois en ce que tu fais, peu importe ce que c'est, même si euh, c'est... Euh, les spectacles de rue, mais tu danses vraiment dans la rue, mais tu arrives à en vivre, tu arrives Ah, oh, mais c'est pas très euh, noble. Pour beaucoup de gens, surtout en France, ça reste de la mendicité. Ça s'appelle la passion. Peu importe comment ça commence, à partir du moment où tu es déterminé ou passionné, ben, ton amour pour ce que tu fais l'emportera. Au fil des années, j'ai pu me faire une routine, mais il se trouve que j'ai eu des petits soucis avec les émigrations dans certains pays. Et donc je me suis dit pourquoi pas Hong Kong. Hello from Hong Kong. Ça a été un pays où ça a été vraiment dur. Les gens parlent pas trop anglais, sont très froids, un peu réticents. Tu danses devant un public, tu as l'impression que tu danses devant un mur ou une âme. C'est pas 100 personnes, c'est une personne. Si tu fais ça pour dire rapprocher à Hong Kong, ça peut s'apparenter à peut-être un, un geste qui ça peut être une insulte. You take one hand to end as you do like. Tu vois euh, des millions de personnes qui passent devant toi, la tête baissée sur leur téléphone. Quand tu arrives à faire un spectacle là-bas, euh, je peux te dire que tu es fier de toi. Quoi. With this, you buy whatever you want. Ice cream, candies, chocolate, Marlboro. It's a joke. Put it in your pocket. Je suis aussi allé à Londres, c'est magnifique quoi, c'est des gens qui se mettent tout de suite dans l'ambiance et ils ont aussi cette culture euh, des spectacles de rue. J'ai eu la chance et l'occasion de performer à Covent Garden, c'est vraiment euh, l'endroit mythique qui s'apparente à, à, à Beaubourg. Il y a dix ans de ça, je passais euh, encore avec ma casquette et mon baggy et je savais qu'on n'était euh, vraiment pas autorisé à, à faire de spectacles là-bas. To live life day by day, traveling, you make a sacrifice to be away from your family and your friends at home to just be on the road. Partout dans mes voyages, j'ai eu des. On m'a mis de l'essence dans ma voiture et euh, j'ai. Ça m'a boosté quoi. C'est pas beau, c'est extraordinaire. Il est pas parti, il a pas été subventionné. Nous, on y va par nos propres moyens. I think William is very good artist, very individual artist, and an artist that is very progressive compared to uh, many other street performers. Le revers de la médaille, c'est que on voit pas sa famille, ses proches, statut social, il euh, y en a pas. J'ai pas d'assurance, j'ai pas de carte vitale, je suis en... je, je touche rien après c'est pas grave, je veux rien. Je n'en veux pas.
envie un petit peu sa liberté, le fait qu'il voyage beaucoup, qu'il fasse ce qu'il veut quand tu veux. J'en ai déjà parlé avec lui et il envie ma vie aussi. Des fois, il se dit j'aimerais bien, euh, bien, bien être comme toi, j'aimerais bien avoir des enfants. Je dis mais en fait, peu importe, dans la vie, peu importe ce que tu feras, tu voudras toujours autre chose. La réussite dans la vie, c'est l'image qu'on nous a beaucoup transmise, c'était bah, d'avoir un travail, d'exceller dedans, des terres, une maison, des enfants. Ça viendra, mais pour l'instant, euh, c'est une vie d'égoïste et je l'assume complètement. Vous voulez me construire une famille euh... Je ne sais pas. Je sais pas. Et si jamais un jour, euh, il a un petit marmot, bah, peut-être qu'il fera ses premiers pas de break euh, avec le mien euh, au petit parc. Je me considère comme un voyageur. Ça fait 14 ans que, que je fais une tournée mondiale sans m'arrêter. Malgré que je puisse être un grand pour lui ou une de ses inspirations, ben, maintenant c'est lui aussi qui m'inspire par rapport à son parcours, par rapport à sa détermination, par rapport à son style de vie que je trouve passionnant et courageux dans le sens où il, il va chercher ce qu'il aime, il va chercher son bonheur, c'est fort. We are very lucky to do what we do. Uh, and live our dream every day of performance. Avec ce qu'on fait nous, tu apprends les clés de la vie. Donc c'est pour ça que je me, je, me, je me poserai jamais de questions sur son avenir parce qu'il a, il a, il a compris les clés de la vie. Lo veo como, como un guerrero de la calle. Es un loco, es un loco. Mesdames, Messieurs, je voudrais faire une photo pour l'envoyer à ma maman. Elle croit que je vends de la drogue. Donc s'il vous plaît, à trois, je vais demander de faire un maximum de bruit et je lui enverrai ça. Ok on y va tout le monde s'il vous plaît À la une À la deux Et à la trois Ça vaut plaisir Elle me croira toujours pas <rire>
Public service announcement. <laughs> Not all black individuals or black males are the same. Well, hey, hey. I feel like they're already judging me um, before I even open my mouth. I, I know that they're already thinking something negative. Sometimes I am afraid as a, a black male, um, depending on the way that I dress or where I am, if I'm wearing baggier clothes or a tall tee, I definitely see the potential for me to be um, racially profiled. There's a different onus that comes on me as a black male than it does on anybody else. I remember being a young kid with no, no niggas, no Mexicans, no dogs allowed. We clearly didn't know our place. They had to teach us that we were black. What do I do when I'm pulled over by the police? I don't want to be an accident. I have no desire to be a statistic, so I'll put my hands up on them. 
on the steering wheel. I'll put my hands on the dashboard. I'll put my hands on the, I'll open the window and put my hands so they can see my hands. So I'm making sure, make it, I wanna make the police officer as comfortable as he can, that this person is not an issue. So I'm very deferential. I'm respectful to him and I am uh, probably crossing my toes at the same time and praying because that scenario could piss, some, piss somebody off. And uh, just like that, I could be asking it. And the story would be, I was, I was threatening and I don't have any desire to be in that story. I have a daughter to take care of, and that's my first priority. It's important to make sure that uh, children of color can advocate for themselves. I want our voice to be heard. I went to all white school, and uh, first grade, I was told that I should be a slave. Parents told me, they, they said, you're, you are different. You are, you are a black man. We've had problems in our history. You're going to have to work harder to be successful. When I was young, police murdered my cousin. So I've always been wary with police. I was actually walking one day back from downtown and um, police stopped me and my friends, asked my friends, do you know this kid or were you with him the entire night? He looks like a suspect in a, a case we're looking for. And um, asked me and started asking me questions. And I, I literally did nothing wrong that entire night. Like I was with my friends that entire night that felt like it was stereotyping, profiling. I wish people would see past stereotypes and see you for the person you are, the human being you are, the content of your character. Oh, oh hey, hey, oh, yeah. hey, hey, the white man oh, thinks he oh, has hey, hey. oh, yeah. the right to define. You can take oh, my oh, hey, wealth, hey. but you can't hey. f with my mind. You only oh, want my oh, success hey, when it hey. nurtures hey. you. But I have oh, twice oh, hey, the hey. love of the hey. life God gave to you to tell me. Oh, boy, hey, oh, hey. Yeah, hey. What a black hey. boy should be. Oh, boy, hey, oh, yeah, hey. Hey. Coming from the inner city, a lot of African Americans feel like sports is the only way out. That's one thing that my dad. Uh, geared me towards of like, if you get into sports, you can get a nice scholarship and they can pay for your four years of college. I believe the game of dominoes was introduced to, to my grandfather and then it was passed down to my dad and then my dad taught me. So I think it was almost one of those generational things. And I do know that Domino's was this way of my dad teaching me how to count money and not people taking advantage of your money as well as life skills. No one man can possess the land. No one man can possess another. One man can possess his own life. Life is a gift, a gift from God, a gift that she has given to live, love, and give away. When we no longer need that gift, we must release it. How you live it is up to you, but we all must. This song is not mine. It was given to me as I will give it to you. I will not copyright this song in his world, for if I copyright this song in his world, he will take most of what is mine for his world. I was born in the 50s and, and grew up in Southeast Texas. And I don't know if I was black then, I was probably colored, trying to go back to Texas after living several years in, in the North. And I had a, a childhood friend who had also lived in the North, and we ended up trying to go back to Texas at the same time. But then we thought, oh God, wouldn't it be great to go to the beach? Boy, we haven't done this since we were very, very young. It, it didn't take long before the police came up to us and said uh, that we were breaking the law and we didn't know what that was. They said we had a glass bottle on the beach. We looked around and there were other people with all kinds of bottles. But it then dawned on me, oh, they were all white people. Reminds me of a Langston Hughes poem. It was, um, let America be America again. And one of the things that he says in that poem is that America never was America to me. Um, 
where I think there's an idea of what an American dream is, and it's not afforded to everyone. And I remember feeling very overwhelmed when hearing about Mike Brown, when hearing about Tamara Rice, when hearing about Trayvon Martin, because it's like, what could I do? What is it that I can offer? I'm, I'm one person. What is it that I can say that would move what feels like an enormous mountain um, that so many other people have tried to move and so many other people have looked at and, and people are refusing to confess that it exists, refusing to acknowledge that racism, that anti-blackness, that white supremacy exists, that you can take a people, snatch a people from their land, that you can profit off of them for hundreds of years and that there's not any type of reparation which needs to be done. And then there's a discounting of history to not look at how not long ago slavery was and the lack of effort to heal the generational trauma, to undo the generational trauma. The people that live and interact with white supremacy, with anti-blackness, with racism every single day, their testimonies are discounted as though they're not valid. There can be black sociologists, black scientists, black psychologists that talk about the effects of racism, black authors, black thinkers, and it's as though their testimonies aren't valid because their blackness stains their credibility. All of our stories, everything that we should strive and aspire to be like is Eurocentric. To see people viewing success as having a seat at the table of whiteness, like one day we're gonna get those Oscars, one day we're gonna get those Grammy nominations, and I'm like, why are we still striving towards that? Who said that that was the standard of excellence of these institutions have never recognized blackness, have only ever recognized excellence from a Eurocentric approach? Why would we look to them as sort of some standard of achievement? Integration is not the same as freedom. Like assimilation is not freedom. Like those things are not necessarily liberation. You can just assimilate into whiteness and go on and not have any kind of freedom because you'll constantly be proving yourself. You'll constantly be saying, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, look, I can talk like you, rather than just validating the expressions which already exist and are beautiful and are valuable contributions um, and have been over the history of the entire world. Things consumed by you Things I cannot understand feelings, they have mothers, they have fathers, they have a history, they have a family, they have a future. We have minds, we think about things, we feel things. Black men are, are people, are humans, just like you, just like everybody else.
The moment a body enters a space, it changes that space. And your presence transforms the space. Dancing in public spaces is a beautiful way to be present with your surrounding by being present with the place, yourself and others, you slowly shift the energy around you. Because you start paying attention to the environment by opening up all your senses to that place, you start engaging with the environment through your movement and other people who pass by are surprised and awakened by their daydream and they might see something new. Dancing in public spaces puts people at ease and creates a sense of community. I always love dancing in unexpected places. Before I went on this one-year journey, I meditated and reflected on the place of dance in our culture, which is mostly presented in theaters. And I had the urge to change that. I wanted to take dance back to the people, back to the streets, to make dance part of our daily lives and spaces. So in 2015, I traveled to 20 countries around the world to put dances in public spaces with the local communities. Every two weeks we were in another country, but nevertheless, I didn't think of it as a tour. I thought of it as a one-year movement meditation with people from around the world to reflect and showcase on how similar we are in our differences. Around the world, the most amazing part was seeing people's faces light up when they saw the moving bodies in public spaces. I loved how people reacted and how they looked curious about the dancing bodies. For example, there were joyous parents and some of the children who were watching were inspired and they even started imitating the dances. And I remember one woman who started crying, seeing the dancers move in her path. She said she'll never forget this moment because it made her pay attention and made her see this place for the first time. These fleeting moments of human connection and interaction is what motivates me to create dances in public spaces.
Another motivation why I do this project around the world was because I wanted to highlight our similarities of how we humans express together and create and move and dance and dream and love. And I also wanted to return to the essence of why I love dancing. And to the essentials of dancing, which is a body moving in space and time without putting it into a black box and without removing it from its natural environments. And nowadays, our natural environments are cities. And so we move in cities in a very straightforward way because cities are built very linearly. You have the streets that are lying next to each other or they cross each other and you have the buildings that go up and down in a very vertical linear pattern. But what would happen if we started moving through cities in a more playful, non-linear way. Also creating with people through movement takes us back to our anima opens up our senses and connects us back to our intuition. Moving with other bodies reminds us to embrace our natural and inherited communication tools. Dance for me, it's a, a language. And for me, the body is the, our first language. We don't, like when we are really small, we don't start talking directly. We are moving, trying to catch things, trying to understand things. And um, I think that it's international language. Dance, because it is energy. It is a possibility to, to connect people, to create new ideas and images. Often I really feel that I'm alive when I move, when I dance. It's somehow the feeling that things are making sense, but at the same time I can also sense clearly the surrounding. And somehow also I think it's the connection to myself and also to the other people. Uh, it's also somehow this being alive, it's quite a miracle. Everything in my life is about movement, and dancing is a way to harmoniously create movement. When I dance, because I'm in such a zen place after I dance, I think it's the time when I'm most creative. So I feel more open, you know, my mind opens up, my heart opens up, and I always feel like you're giving. Even if you're dancing solo, I always feel like I'm giving this energy to the universe. And you know, when you give, you receive. And I think I receive creativity through that. It just made me realize there were interesting things and there were other possibilities for you to express yourself. I dance because it feels good. Um, it's a multi-sensory experience for me. It engages my body in different ways, from the sounds, to the sights, to the feeling of being in the present, being in a place, and feeling other bodies alongside my own body. It was important to me to share this movement exploration project, not just in one city, but in many cities around the world.
and also for myself to take a year to connect to different communities, share movement explorations, to show how we are, in essence, all connected. You make a connection to your body when you dance. You can express with your body what are you feeling. With dancing, you are using your body so that you are transmitting senses, feelings, emotion, emotions. Sometimes you cannot communicate with words, it's difficult, but with the body, it's easier. And that liberates you, that makes you free. I think it's a big and wide expression that uh, implies uh, many resources you have to communicate. So dance means a uh, whole speech. Hmm. When people say dance is a universal language, they don't really mean the movement of dance, because the different forms of dance are very codified, and to me, they are not universal. What is universal about dance is the emotion and feeling behind the movement vocabulary. How it makes us feel is what connects us. I see dance as a form of communication that speaks to our universal understanding of humanity. When I'm dancing, I don't know why, but I can dance and I can express, I can be a different person, I can express my feelings, I can express something I don't speak. The core message of the interviewees is that when people dance, they can communicate on a much more complex and deeper level, and that they can express thoughts, feelings, emotions with so much more nuance and clarity than with words. I have been reflecting and wondering what it is that we are missing when we don't use the body in a more holistic way. How I, how I can dance and how 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 people uh, feel mm -hmm. when we are dancing. Yeah. That is the meaning. That is the meaning. <laughs> I think when we move with each other, there's a different level of communication happening. An intuitive level of trust is building between people and it brings us closer to each other. When we dance with each other, we experience this wholeness of being with another person, and it's like a new learned language. It's my language. It's the way that I can express everything. I move to process my thoughts. 
but I realized it was the way that I could process my thoughts and take a deep dive into the parts of me that were unknown. And exploring that unknown is what I relied on dance to be. The body is really the shortest distance between two people. It makes this immediate connection across the distance between where I end and you begin. That immeasurable distance can instantly be made as close as this. I dance because I have to. It's, it's my life, you know, like, um, I don't see myself without my dancing. It's something I need in order to survive. It gave me all the tools to get to know myself, to discover my strength. When moving with other people, we have to deeply connect to who we are. And with that depth, we can communicate to others through this new discovered moving self. I used to have difficulties in how I, exp I express myself, uh, mostly physically. But you know, when you're talking to somebody body to body, I find it more, more touching and more realistic. Themselves and feeling really what they are and recognizing themselves as fully person. It's the way that I can express the things that I cannot uh, otherwise express with words or writing or with music, you know. I do poetry sometimes. But for me, dance is the ultimate medium of communication. Dance is a beautiful way to create with other people and to be present in space with other people. It's also a magical way to understand myself and life. Life in totality is incomprehensible. Dance provides a lens to view life and it creates a space for me to move and to be moved.
by something so incomprehensible. I have come to the realization that there is nothing worth more in this world than being genuinely happy. There is nothing worse than watching people just go through the motions. I refuse to accept that. 
I will not settle. Why do I care about what other people think of me or how other people view me? And don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> She passed away a couple years ago, and you can tell he's really lonely. Ultimately, he is the reason that I have faith in love and family. I would just see him all the time. Right, right. And you remember, you remember what he would always say? He used to go, hello, sir, how are you today? <laughs> yes. I love that guy. Uh, he was just in and out. Right? He was just in and out. And then randomly I would see him. And I'm like, yo, where you? Where have you been? I go, oh, no, I am, dude. What's up? And he would go on. And I'd be like, yo. I feel bad. I feel bad, but I had class. And my team yeah. like, oh, my back hurts. I come from Egypt. Like, oh, <laughs> that's a great segue, dude. <laughs> He did tell me he was from Egypt one time. He was a he was a teacher. He was right? he did theater. Okay, cool. <laughs> Have to get to rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh man. man. Too bad he got fired. Yeah, too bad. It's like a child, like, <laughs> it's like the child wants attention, wants to play all the time. What I know about pipe welding is, is super artistic just in the fact that the wrist motion is really rhythmic and he likes to listen to music so he keeps on tempo because there's a super fine line from going too fast or going too slow it'll mess up the joint it'll mess up the weld the music keeps him on time and keeps him focused too child in me as well. Yeah. What I've learned is that it's okay to allow yourself to make mistakes. Recently, I've really been trying to work on the version of myself that I want to be, that I know I can be.
One thing I do know is that she likes to sit on the steps outside, enjoy the weather, read a book. She's kind. She's definitely an animal lover. I wonder what kind of day she's having today. Being an artist in this time is an act of rebellion in and of itself. If anything, we need more art in the world. It's brave, it's courageous to dance, to sing, to act and be vulnerable. I think what I've learned most about is patience and not just like the waiting for your coffee on a busy Monday morning or waiting for the light to turn green kind of patience but the patience that comes with knowing when to give yourself or when to give others a break during hard and stressful times. I've become a much more patient person in everyday life and just knowing that things can take time but it'll all be okay in the end. Same old stuff, just a different day. Funny saying. Most people think it's funny because of the routine of life. You work, go to school, eat food, pay taxes, go to sleep and repeat. To me, I think it's funny because of everything out of the routine. We're in a pandemic where I have to dress like I'm robbing a store just across the street. We're protesting in the streets to fight for equal rights. We're shot in the streets because we don't have equal rights. 
Then we're rioting in the streets to show how angry we are, which only leads to us hurting each other. <laughs> same old stuff, just a different day. Such a funny phrase. The same stuff that we go through today has happened before again and again and again. My grandfather is 73 years old. He's a retired police officer from New York. He survived two epidemics, racial tensions, protests, riots, and a hell of a lot more. I listen. I listen to the same stories of how he survived polio and smallpox outbreaks, all while seeing his neighbors be shifted into forced quarantines out of their neighborhoods, out of their homes. I listen to the same stories of him having to be a police officer. Being a black cop, knowing what other officers do to his own race just because they have that power, pissed off a lot of people in his life. Sure as hell pissed my dad off. I listen to my grandfather tell me over and over again, there's nothing new under the sun, which is just a clever way to say it's the same old stuff, just a different day. There was a girl I knew who hated going outside in the summertime because she didn't want to get darker. She hated the color of her skin because no one else in the room looked like her. That girl now loves her chocolate melanin complexion and how it amazes others when she walks in a room. There was a girl I knew who was at the top of her class but never wanted to speak up because she didn't want to be considered that black girl. That girl now voices her opinion without any hesitation. There was a girl I knew who only wore extensions to school because she felt like her natural hair was too ugly, nappy, or distracting to be styled. That girl now embraces all her kinks and curls that form her crown. There was a girl I knew who hated her body because it didn't capture what society thought was beautiful. That girl now has learned that beauty is within. To be beautiful, you must look beyond the surface. There was a girl I knew who felt like the world was against her. She was suffocating in her own skin. That girl now knows her power. She knows that her skin matters. Her voice matters. She matters. 
She is beautiful inside and out. That girl is me.
Don't be afraid to voice your opinions, thoughts, and all of your emotions because they are just as important as anyone else's. Your voice is powerful. When you speak, speak with confidence, courage, and purpose. Remember that you are beautiful, intelligent, and strong. Always stay true to yourself. You are not an angry black woman. You're just a bomb ass woman. Don't let others dim your sparkling light. Continue. Continue to be the light in a dark world. <laughs>